Sometimes we got the misconception or preconception or preconceived notion that we break out of our mother's womb speaking in tongues and raising our hands and our first book was a Bible. But that doesn't always work out like that. You see, the Bible tells us very clearly that God has chosen the nothings of this world to shame the wise. That means that God is meticulous and God has a sense of humor. Touch your neighbor, tell him he has a sense of humor. Tell him that's why he made you. In other words, God had a plan within a plan. I'm going to say it again. God had a plan within a plan. That means that God is meticulous in his design. And when Paul says that inside of these earthen vessels there's a treasure, the treasure is a diamond. Because a diamond in its original state is not a diamond but a piece of coal. It's, it's ugly, it's black, it's chalky. But a, a coal has to pass through a process. Somebody say process. process. The process is uncomfortable. It's heat and pressure. And what, 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 what would determine that coal to turn, and turn into a diamond is that the coal doesn't break or crack. Because if the coal splits or breaks, it will not be able to become a diamond. It is disqualified from being the most precious stone on earth. And so God sometimes allows you and me to be in an uncomfortable place. You see, because when we are uncomfortable, he's comfortable. He knows that it is in the uncomfortability that we're going to look for him, that we're going to go all out for him, that we're going to seek him more hard or harder and, 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 and with more tenacity and fervor and, and with, more, with, more, with more zeal than ever before. God knows that the moment that he gives you what you've asked him for, sometimes we get comfortable in our faith and in our walk. So God sometimes does what the eagle does. That's why he compares us with eagles, you see. Because an eaglet, when it's still in the shell, has to break out of the shell. The only way that the eaglet breaks out of the shell is by pecking. He has to peck continuously. Nobody's going to break the shell for him. Nobody's going to crack the egg for him. No, he has to peck his way out. And once he pecks his way out of his circumference, which has kept him, he'll allow or he'll open up to freedom. There's another world. What God's been telling you is that... You need to continue praying harder than ever. You need to continue persevering harder than ever. You need to continue going as fast and as hard as ever. Because once you break out of the circumference that has kept you back, or has kept you mediocrity, or has kept you in normalcy, or has kept you in traditionalism, or has kept you being a normal Christian, once you break out of there, you're going to see that God is going to do great, exceedingly, abundantly, above everything that you can ever ask or think. Touch your hand. I believe that in my spirit, you see. And I believe that once, we, you know what happens, something interesting is that when the eaglet is born and he's in the, in the nest, could you, could you, uh, uh, my friend, could you leave the mic the way it is? Yeah, just, just. Once, once the eaglet is in the nest, once it's, once it's there, it'll stay three months. And interestingly, the mother of that eaglet has prepared the nest with thorns, with thistles, with broken branches, and on top of that, she'll put of feathers and should put leaves on it. If on the third month that eagle is not out of his nest, the mother starts taking away all of the all of the feathers and all of the leaves. So that the eagle can be uncomfortable in his nest. You see, because the eagle's purpose is not to just sit on a nest. The eagle's purpose is for it to fly. fly. And what will happen, sometimes they take all of the feathers out and all of the, all of the uh, feathers and all of the leaves and he's still comfortable within the uncomfortability. That's when the father comes and the eagle starts beating on the nest and beating on the eaglet so that it would provoke him to come out of the nest and to fly. Now, in other words, the, the father says, you were not created to just be a churchgoer. You were not created to just sit on a pew. You were created for celestial supremacy. You were created to fly. You were created to persevere. You were created to soar. You were created to go above and beyond. The eagle is the only animal compared to a lion, compared to any other. It can be a lion, a hyena, an elephant, that when they see a storm, most lions and tigers go into a cave or they'll hide. But an eagle sees the storm and he'll run, he'll fly as fast as he can towards the storm and he'll stretch out 
this wind snowing that the storm that was sent to destroy or perhaps to endanger him is going to propel him to new heights and new levels. you got to understand that what's going on in your life right now, this second, is not an assignment to destroy you. It's an assignment to stretch you like you've never been stretched yeah. before. To saw you like you've never saw it before. So that you can fly high like the eagle. That's why the Bible says that those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will run and not grow weary. Touch your name and tell them, you've got to learn how to fly. you got to learn something. Can somebody say amen to that? Now this is interesting because when we read this text, we understand that God is talking about a people who are not perfect. A people that were imperfect. And you may say, what is it about life that's going to make me into the man? Don't you see that tribulation work is patience, patience, peace, peace, long-suffering, and the long-suffering will not let you be ashamed. In other words, tribulation is for you and for me. If we are tribulated, it's for our consolation and our salvation. In other words, it is going to be, listen, it's going to be difficulty that's going to make you into the warrior God has called you to be. Come on now. We talk about Joseph, but Joseph, what made Joseph was betrayal. Come on. Talk to me, somebody. Come on. What made Moses was Pharaoh. What made Jeremiah was rejection. What made David was a nine foot giant. What made, what made Jonah was a whale. What made Daniel was a, 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 a lion's den. What made John the Baptist was decapitation. Oh. I didn't think you'd say amen to that. What made Lazarus was death. What made Paul was prison. What made Peter, what made Peter was denial. What made Jesus was the cross. My question to you today, before we begin, this is just a preamble, before we begin, what is making you into the man or the woman that God has called you to be? Because comfort, relaxation, in other words, comfortability will only breed, will only breed an, an anti-spirit, which God doesn't want you to have. That's why the Bible says that be not conformed to the patterns of this world, be conformed by the, by the one we knew. In other words, there has to be something, someone, people, issues, problems that are going to provocate the hand of God in your life and it's going to make you seek harder, pray longer, worship with tears, and it's going to make you go after God. Somebody shout it in. What is defining you? Is it a car? A lot of people have car, they have cars, they don't have direction. Come on. You can have a GPS and still be lost. No. You can have a house and not have a home. Talk to me. Come on. You can have an orthopedic bed that will turn you into a pretzel and still not have rest. You can have the best medication in the planet and still be sick. You can have all the friends in the world and be in the largest crowds and be alone. You can have 3,000 Facebook friends and still contemplate suicide. Are you here? So my question is, what is defining you? You can still be all tagged up and still be messageless. Huh. Say it. The things that this world offers are temporal, you see. You can't put a band-aid over cancer. My mom was diagnosed with cancer in March right before convention. Nobody knew about it. I battled that by myself. I told people on Facebook, man, pray for my mom. She's battling illnesses and issues. And can I tell you, that there, there were some options. My mom is 80 years old, a prayer warrior. There's some options, and one of the options was not a band-aid. <laughs> So in other words, as we delve into this message, you're going to understand by the end of tonight that God does not we want to recruit spiritual chumps. God wants to recruit people who are willing to go and to put both hands on the plow and not even look back. Because if you have your hand on the plow and you look back, Jesus said, you ain't fit for service. Come on, come on. 
come on. Are you willing to die to yourself? Ask your neighbor. They might not even like that. But ask him, are you willing to die to yourself? Are you willing to die to your image? Are you willing to die to the genre? Are you willing to die to your name? Come on. <laughs> Is anybody here? And I just want to tell you that tonight, if you find yourself under attack, you are a perfect candidate for transformation tonight. Come on. Now. Can you say amen? amen? I said, can you say amen? Amen. That's why you almost didn't make it here. That's why your car broke down. That's why your job, your job told you you had a work lead. That's why you were, you were tired. That's why they invited you so many other places. The devil did everything in his power to, to prohibit you from coming here. Not to hear a man, not to see a man, but to hear his voice for your life. His direction for your path. Come on. Come on. Are you here? Somebody say that. And so here's what I want to say. I want to say tonight, before we begin, can you shut your phone off? Go ahead, I'll give you a second. Shut it off. Can you tell the person next to you, don't talk to me tonight. I want to pay attention. And listen, grab your mind and bring it here. 